So I can't remember if I made any videos to get up to this point, but if I did, you'd have already seen them. If not, we've got a normal control box here with the steel back. So what I normally do is I take the back out and just put it on the bench flat. If I might have got some photos, I'll put them in the video if I do. Just sort of lay everything out where I think it needs to go making sure you can fit everything in the box um, in hindsight we probably needed a slightly slightly bigger box actually there's more stuff that needed to go in here than i than i remembered but either way we've managed to squeeze it all in um so i've got all that bolted back now it's all on din rails so it's all movable and changeable in the future so you've got the the actual dyno controller at the top the support device is sp6 and we've got a row of contactors and relays so that's for stuff like the fan the extractor the air brake solenoids all the outputs basically We'll be going through various contactors. Um, 12 volt power supply at the bottom there for the control, so it's just running control stuff. Obviously breakers and all the all the cables will be coming in through the through the terminal strip at the bottom. Then we've got the computer there, which will, is obviously what will run the run the software. Uh, the only thing I haven't quite squeezed in here yet is the there's a um, slightly larger or well, higher output power supply that drives the fans. Um, obviously they take quite a lot of current and I put them on a separate power supply. Uh, that just fits in the side here, that's why I probably should have had a slightly larger box. But either way, we've managed to get it all in there. So yeah, that was that other power supply I was talking about. And that's just going to go in the side of the box. A little bit like that. It's a little bit tight. If I'd done it again, I would have uh, had a slightly larger box. But there you go. Have a bolt in the side there. We'll make some holes. And once that's bolted in there, we'll put put this whole cabinet back on the dyno again. We can basically start bringing all the cables in and just putting it all away. Uh, and then it's pretty much ready to power up, hopefully. Right, okay guys, um, you can see we've got the control box mounted on the frame of the dyno now. I put all this together on the bench just because it's a lot easier drilling all the holes and stuff when you're not clambering around on top of the dyno frame. I uh, can't remember if I made any video clips of that, but if I didn't, that's what's happened. Uh, so everything's bolted up here now and secure, everything is mounted in, we've got a dyno controller at the top, some contactors and relays which will basically be driving the fans, the airlift solenoids, the hydraulic pack and the solenoids and the extractor fan, um, and then just some other bits and pieces. But control stuff on the front just to you know, indicate the lights and stuff so you know what's going on and to turn it on and off and also I've got a switch on there which I'm going to use as like a lockout for the hydraulic pack so when you once the car's on and strapped you can sort of lock it so that you can't accidentally activate that hydraulic system when you've got a car strapped in position because obviously that wouldn't be particularly great so really now it's just a case of bringing all the cables from the dynos up into this box terminating it all on the terminal strip at the bottom um, and just yeah wires basically lots of wires so we'll try and try and get that done next right okay you can see we've got the thing pulled right in now i pulled that in because i needed to paint the rest of the frame up at the back that was kind of covered over by the dyno in doing so reminded me that i haven't painted the back of it yet because i ran out of paint so ordered a bit more of that up just to finish that there is primer on it which is why it hasn't gone rusty but it wants a lick of paint really so that's i think that's the first time i've had it pulled all the way forward so you can see the, the floors are almost completely closed up there now so i'm just on the back here welding a few bits on that i'd kind of neglected to do earlier on we've got those four base plates there which is just to anchor this whole frame to the floor at the back we've got it obviously anchored at the front already i think you saw that in the previous clip we're going to put four thunderbolts in across the back here to pull this thing right down tight to the floor and seems that we've got this frame here and it's well obviously super sturdy i'm actually going to weld some tie down points to the frame rather than bolt them to the floor because there's no sense putting it on the floor drilling holes in the floor when we've already got the steel work here anyway so you can see i've just drilled and prepped four holes in the back frame here they're obviously not they're, they're central to the um to the rollers obviously not the frame because the frame comes out wider so i've just got one welded on the end here Take the ground clamp on there at the moment but i'm going to put four they're just lifting eyes basically but they're perfect fit for a strap end once they're hooked in they can't sort of come out and put the four across the back to cover to cover the back of the vehicle and you probably remember in my older clips with the old dyno i always like to have some side straps here in between the axles obviously we got out the front we'll be strapping like we used to i've got a floor anchor 
on both sides to distract the car from the front. That stops the car being able to move sideways. And you can also use that to your benefit if you want to pull the car down a bit with these being lower than the car. And we had the same, the same setup on the old dynamic. It was quite handy because if you did have a bit of traction trouble, you could actually pull the car down as the roller. Um, but generally, once the tyres are warm and the rollers are warm, uh, especially if you spray them, you don't generally need to, but it is handy to be able to do that. But as I was saying before, I used to like having a second set just in underneath. I used to slip them in under behind the front wheels on like the subframe or somewhere. So the, cross them over left or right. And it just gives you that extra margin of safety so that if one of the front ones was to fail, the car can't go sideways. Um, I'm generally more concerned about the car going sideways than forwards or back, to be honest, because that's when things get a little bit sketchy. So I think what I'm going to do is put a couple of eyes on both sides on that frame there and on the floor on the other side. And we've got, so we've got the crooks again, all four corners of a dyno. So you can use them to your advantage. So for example, if you want to come in, in, in under the car here, you can come through, through that and then back. And you can use them on the back as well. And on the front, it's different cars call for different things. So just having lots of eyes and places you can tie to, is just really useful. So I'm just working on that now, basically, while we've got this pulled forwards. And once that is completed, a little bit of paint to put on there. Basically just wiring up that control box, priming up the hydraulics. I've got to get shop air across to here, which is nearly done. Chris popped in the other evening and has ran some copper as far as there. That's all hooked into the airline. It's just isolated there at the moment. So all I've got to do really is just bring bring some nylon or something across with the electric and down in. That's for your lifts, obviously. Wire up the control panel um, and we've got the extractor to do. I think you should have seen a clip of me and Chris boring out through the wall. So this is the original extractor from the old workshop, which I'm sure you'll remember. It looks tiny, but we used to swear by this thing. And that will, I mean, that will literally carry away all of the smoke with, well, anything we ever put on it. The only downside of it is it does need to be coupled pretty much directly behind the exhaust, which on some cars with obviously tight fitting bumpers and stuff isn't ideal. Or if, or, or if the car's got two exhaust exits, and then you also run into problems there. But we generally found that was as effective as anything. So we're going to get that running as the main extractor initially, because we know that works, so it'll get us going. Um, also got, I'm going to have to put another enclosure on the wall to house the VFD, get it all just screwed to the wall, obviously, in the old workshop. We'll try and do it a little bit tidy up here. That will then need power, so we'll bring that, obviously, in the trunk in. And then I've got a control cable, obviously, that will have to go back for your trunk in and up and over, back to that box, which will then basically tell the VFD to come on and off if you remember, we used to have it variable speed. So when the rollers were stationary, the extractor, the extractor would idle down. So it's still carrying away your exhaust fumes, but it's really quiet. It just means that every time you stop on the dyno, the noise level automatically reduces so you can talk and hear yourself think. And then as soon as you start again, it ramps back up. Obviously all of that is controlled by the dyno controller. So that has to get a talk. So just drilled out this piece of bar stock now, Ali. I'm just putting some threads in the end of it now so we can put a fitting in it. Just a normal push fit job, some eight mil. And that will then enable us to pressurize the airbags on that second dyno. They aren't very deep fittings, so we don't need to thread it very far. All right, so we've put some threads in the end of there now. So we can thread in that fitting. Knit that up a little bit.
and the aluminium so I don't want to go too silly. So I can duplicate clip that on the end of the fire hose and then put the nylon straight in the end of it and I've got to make another one for the, uh, for those two airbags if you remember. Right okay so you can see I've got those two bungs mounted now, just got them duplicate clipped in the end of that hose. I've left that fire hose longer than on the other one for a minute. I don't think it's going to interfere with anything but I can always cut it shorter if it's a problem. Once you've got them teed together into the air solenoids which then goes back and the main air feed is on the floor there at the moment. The next job is going to be to run an air feed up and over to give air to the dyno.